Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video on Legends of Tomorrow Season 2. And this is going to be my review for Episode 14, otherwise entitled Moonshot. Now obviously before going ahead, there will be spoilers within this review, so if you have not watched the episode yet, please stop the video, go watch it, then come back to this video later on, because as I said, there will be spoilers within this review. So this episode was basically set up at the end of last episode when we saw Reverse Flash or Earbud Thorn posing as a doctor within NASA to get DNA from an astronaut. So he could do that thing that he did uh, like at the earlier part of this season with Martin Stein. And as we saw in the Flash season one with uh, the real Harrison Wells to make himself look like that astronaut. Obviously, the episode began with Mick having the intro again, which, it was still funny. Was it a tiny bit different than last time? I think it might have been a tiny bit different, I'm not too sure. If it was the same, once again, still funny, hilarious. Now, we find out that Rip Hunter actually dropped Commander Steel back in 1965 in Manhattan, New York, with his Spear of Destiny piece. So really, it hasn't really been like said straight up in the episodes, but like, you know, they were thought to have died in Leipzig in Germany, I think it was, back in the 1940s, but obviously they were all scattered throughout history with uh, history with the different pieces of the Spear of Destiny. They didn't actually all die, but that's what their family members were told and stuff like that. But they really had a cool transition with the legends, like, you know, coming in after one Rip Hunter left, the other Rip Hunter with all the other legends came. It was a cool transition, at least I thought it was cool. And I guess this wasn't the most surprising part of the episode, but we find out that Henry Haywood, or Commander Steel, is actually working for NASA. But, yeah, just casually, just working for NASA. But it's actually for a really good reason, because it's going to be pretty hard to place or hide this piece of the Spear of Destiny anywhere on Earth, because the Legion are most likely going to find it. So Henry, or Commander Steel, took it to the next level, and he actually uh, put it on the goddamn moon. He actually put the piece within the flag that is planted on the moon, by Apollo 11, I think it is. But yeah, as I said, Eobard Thorne disguised himself as that astronaut, and he's actually changed Apollo 13's destiny because he wanted to get on the moon, obviously, because he wanted to get that piece of the Spear of Destiny. One thing they didn't really do in the episode, like, they didn't show Eobard Thorne trying to get it off Ray, unless at the beginning of next episode, Ray's looking for it, and he's like, oh, crap, Eobard Thorne took it off me. But yeah, obviously the, the destiny has been changed because in real history, there's meant to be an issue with an oxygen tank on the Apollo 13. They have to actually abort their mission and not land on the moon. So they like go around the moon, I think it is. Like they use the gravitational pull of it or something. I can't remember. There's a movie on Apollo 13 if you want to go watch it. But one of the most silly parts of the episode, but it was still a fun scene to watch, was Ray Palmer versus Eobard Thorne in space. Like zero gravity. It was a space fight. So uh, Reverse Flash couldn't use his speed in the zero gravity, so it was just like a normal fight. It was very, very silly, but still pretty funny to watch. But speaking of funny things to happen, the funniest part, which actually made me, I was laughing out loud, like really hard, because I wasn't expecting it at all. Like I, was, I wasn't crying, but like my eyes were starting to water up because I was actually laughing pretty hard. And that was when Martin Stein started singing in Mission Control to like distract them. And then Mick or Heatwave joins in. I was not expecting it, so I was laughing so hard, I found it so funny. And even like at the end of the episode, in the end credits, which I don't think they've ever done on Legends, they actually showed more of that singing part, which was just hilarious. Now, one thing that was sort of highlighted in the synopsis for this episode was that Rip and Sarah would be sort of struggling over figuring out who is captain, so they have that verbal fight. A lot of tension between them in this episode, but it sort of comes to a head at the end of the episode, where it's basically said, yeah, Sarah's the captain just because she's been captaining the legends throughout this whole deal with the legion of doom so she really knows what she's doing and you can even tell like rip's using like older methods when he wants to do stuff and sarah's really having this like new way of thinking which it might seem a bit risky but it gets things done while rip tries to play it a bit too safe most of the time i thought it was cool when ray got to walk on the moon it must have been a dream come true to him but another funny part was that vlog that Ray was doing and like Eobard Thorne was in the background just going like what are you doing I found that hilarious it was just yeah it was just really funny even when Ray was going oh scientist time traveler and most recently astronaut I just found it really funny but I wasn't expecting them working together to get off the moon like you could tell Eobard had some other motives but they really needed to work together because one thing that really isn't like brought up too often even on the flash when he was there He's a scientist from the future. Like, he's really smart. He knows what he's doing. It's really not brought up uh, that often, which I'm very surprised with. Like, he is called Professor Zoom. Other than the reverse flash, he is Professor Zoom. So, at least they brought that up and actually, you know, integrated it into the story, which I thought was really great. 
But one thing I wasn't really expecting me to like hit me in the feels was when Henry or you know Commander Steel sacrificed himself to save the legends. I wasn't expecting to like you know feel that so much, and uh, yeah, it was it was pretty emotional, especially for Nate because. Nate's been a big part of this season, but he really hasn't had too much emotional stuff to deal with, and this was one big thing, and Henry could sacrifice himself and nothing really changes, because he was from the past in the future, it's not like they're really changing anything, unless he did stuff with NASA, but it might not have been too much changed, but they might reveal some stuff in later episodes, I don't know if they will, but yeah, it was a tough thing to do. And then we had Nate at the end when he actually got to meet his father when he was younger, so because Henry had set up for his son Hank to come to the Apollo 13 mission control, like he'd rigged a contest so he could come so he could meet his son without officially saying, hi, I'm your dad. And even when Nate was talking to his younger version of his dad, I thought that was pretty emotional and uh, a nice scene. But the thing right at the end of the episode, which you would have to think is going to have a major effect over the next handful of episodes, is when Vixen sees the future of her, as well as her city and her granddaughter's future. Like we see Murray McCabe or the Vixen that we saw in Arrow Season 4. So she knows this is all going to happen. And that's a dangerous thing for someone to know what's going to happen. Because if she goes somewhere, she can like preempt that something's going to happen. So yeah, th that's risky. And I'm very interested to see where that goes and if anything has changed. But overall, I thought this was a really fun episode. It wasn't the greatest episode of Legends of Tomorrow ever. It was just a fun episode where, you know, they get another piece of the Spear of Destiny, but I am very interested to see if Eobard Thorne took it at the end of that episode when he was running away. Black Flash was coming for him, so that might have make it, made him think, no, nope, get out of here straight away, forget about that piece, we can get it later, or if he did, you know, sneak it out when he was running away. So hopefully that gets explained at the beginning of next episode, if that's an actual thing. But if not, I'm assuming they'll uh, try to get that last piece, or this piece from the moon, might I say in another episode, hopefully the next one. But thanks for watching guys, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on it. Let me know in the comments section down below what was your favourite part of the episode. Do you think that Eobard Thorne got that piece of the Spear of Destiny from Rey before he left, or was he just bolting it as fast as he could because Black Flash was on his way? Yeah, just leave all those opinions in the comments section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later guys, and goodbye.